In other news, $5,000 have been stolen from the embassy. When I met the first messenger, I was unimpressed. I said, why? Why is cheap $10 haircut? Why is Peruvian shoes and his slightly bemused, ever-shifting eyes? Why him? Is this some sort of exercise? I asked. He didn't say a word, but he delivered the envelope without any trouble, and inside the envelope there were exactly three photographs. One of the next man I was to meet, one of a courtyard, and one of a jump rope. On the back of the first picture there was a name, on the back of the second there was an address, and on the back of the third, as suspected, there was nothing. The address led me to the courtyard of my old high school, which had been abandoned for many years after an unexplained fire. I could still smell the bittersweet scent of burnt pencils. This series of strange and intricate procedures was meant to be personal, and yet, I couldn't help but be struck with an overwhelming sense of unfamiliarity all the same. The man presented me with a key. A key to what, I did not yet know. But he also offered me a map with the location circled in red, along with his jump rope, as if he thought I would be needing it. By midday, I found myself in the outskirts of town, where a woman with a young face but old eyes asked me for a password, at which I temporarily panicked, for I had none. Upon further inspection of the third photograph, however, I discovered a single word that revealed itself only at the warmth of my breath in the cool afternoon. Satisfied that I was who I said I was, the woman gave me a sequence of numbers. It took me no time at all to realize they were coordinates, and soon I was digging deep beneath the ground of Blackwood Forest. Exactly three feet down, I came upon a suitcase, and when I opened it, as suspected, there was nothing. Beneath the false bottom, however, lied roughly five grand in cash, the price of a secret, the biggest secret this town had to offer. This is where Benjamin comes in, Benjamin Hannigan. I had not expected my old school friend to be wrapped up in all of this, and yet, there he was, walking through the front entrance of the local corner coffee shop with a sad smile. I'm an actor now, he said. But I'm not selling secrets. Any good? Damn good. I can fool myself as much as anyone else. Is that so? I can slow my heartbeat if I want to. At a thought. A passing thought. The drum of my life force will slow down. To instant tranquility. Naturally, I was impressed, but the small talk did not last. Why? Benjamin asked. Why go through all this trouble to find out a secret you know you can't tell anyone else? Why bother finding out something that can be boiled down to just words? This one is... personal. You do this for a living, you should understand more than anyone else the fatal attraction of a secret. It's different for everyone. Call me curious. I, what secret is it exactly that you're interested in this evening? Three years ago, a local school catches fire. A week later, a gas station. Another week, a bookshop. My father's bookshop. He was badly injured. Seemingly random, the, the cases remained unsolved. You could call me curious as well. Benjamin looked unsurprised, as if he had already known. Let's take a walk, he said. You're not gonna like the answer. I don't care. I need to know. Some secrets are best left untouched. The police have reopened the case. I can't risk this information falling into the wrong hands. And that's when I saw the news by a mere coincidence. Five grams stolen in a briefcase that looked just like mine. It was a setup. The pieces began falling together. It had been Benjamin who had set the fires. I would never get to find out why, but the police were looking back into his case, and now he needed someone to blame, and that someone was me. Sirens sounded in the distance, and I knew they were coming for me. My options had diminished rapidly, and I had to act quickly. Benjamin seemed calm but he knew I understood what was happening. I, framed with stolen cash, Benjamin with a silver tongue and a determination to keep his dark past in the past. With Benjamin alive, he could weave his false tale with ease and fool any lie detector with his pulse in his control. My reputation would be ruined. The future was looking bleak. But you can't lie if you're dead. By the time the authorities checked Benjamin's pulse, as suspected, there was nothing. That was made sure of. Does that answer all of your questions?